Rob, which is kind of somebody just texted me saying Tim Pool just said. So if you can pull this up, Rob, which is kind of I, I don't know what Tim is going through and <laughs> if he is he's trying to find a way to create B for himself. I don't know what it is. Yo, Tim is actually going through a lot. If you guys are on Twitter, and I hope you guys are, I like it. it they, oh my God, Tim, the fence sitting isn't going to work anymore. And I'm not one of those like, oh, you got to pick a side. You got to pick a side. Like never that, right? Like do you definitely just do you or whatever. You don't have to quote, pick a side, but Tim acts like he's not picking a side. Anyway, he's been very disingenuous about a lot of things going on. And I feel like he's chasing his tail. Now I gave you my total opinion on this. So I probably like, you know, the rest of this episode, you're probably going to see it through my eyes. Maybe not, but let's look at this because when you're coming after PBD podcast, like Patrick bet David, I think it's a bit much, you know, I'm just saying like, is we have uh, we we don't uh uh process a lot of how tim is processing this a guy comments and said take notes tim Cass. when your fan, fans back by having and hosting the important debates he responds so before we get even to his response stick around to close it like just stick around i'm going to tell you exactly where that comment came from and then you'll understand why tim is losing his mind actually i was asked to do the debate and turned him down first of all we never asked you to do this debate last week. We spoke to you on March 25th, which was when you called us out for having uh, Chris Como being one of our talent uh, uh, that's going to be doing podcasts and different shows with us. You were not happy. You said it was, what was his words? He says something effing, uh, 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 dumbest effing decision ever. He said something like that, if I recall. He didn't have is, nice words. No, no, but by the way, totally fine. I think he's actually a very talented guy. And he does a uh, good good work. He does very good. So you guys very- don't remember. I remember when that happened. So the PPD podcast has brought on Chris Cuomo. And I think a lot of us thought that Chris Cuomo was going to be there literally every day. He's not there every day. And when I saw they did that, I was like, well, it's good to have a dissenting voice. You know, I noticed that like a lot of people were really worked up about this. Like, oh, oh my God, a PPD podcast is going to have corny Chris Cuomo on, uh, you know, from the left. And oh, it's fake banter. And I'm just like, oh. They probably they don't want an echo chamber. And Chris Cuomo's a weirdo. So, you know, he goes around the circles a hundred times just to make a certain point. So I get it. So that's what they're talking about. And Tim gave him a hard time for doing that. And Patrick, but David had replied very, very professionally and said, that's what's up. You know, um, we appreciate your opinion. And, you know, you do you, we do us. <laughs> very smart guy. We've had him on before. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, Tim, it, it, I just put this on Twitter and I said the following. I said, hey question mark if you want to pull up my tweet rob because uh, uh uh and i got rob right here who spoke to vanessa your person go to my last tweet i said Tim. actually turned it down question mark our team and your team spoke on march 25th your book has said you wanted us to fly you down in a private jet no if you guys like the content that i'm making please don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell really trying to grow this channel guys i want to start live streaming soon i'm trying to get to a thousand and you guys have been amazing Thank you, everybody who watches. Thank you. Um, I'm always grateful for everybody watching. No one's ever asked that, which was kind of a strange request, especially after I attended your paid event in Miami. You asked me to do, and I asked you for nothing. It was a favor. So it's kind of weird to say, I come to your event with Matt Gates and others, and it was free, and you paid, you made money that night, and we ask you to come and have a conversation after you say it's the mm-hmm. f- worst effing decision, and you say this. So let me know if you want me to share the email exchange. And Rob, I think you communicated, so you want to kind of a... Uh, Give any commentary on this. Well, we did. We tried. I, it's difficult to figure out the first class jet issue. We weren't looking. That's not in the budget for the event that we had. So what we offered was, you know, what we normally offer round trip accommodations, a business or first class flight, a hotel. When they said that they needed the private jet, we offered to do the podcast on a different day and time so that he could fly down on a commercial plane, but still keep his recording schedule and come work with us and do the podcast. Mm -hmm. And they continued to insist after multiple times that they just wanted the uh, private jet. So that was it. Okay, let me tell you this.
I don't, I don't fault a so-called, like, I don't want to say so-called celebrity, right? But like, I don't fault a person for making certain demands in their contracts. It's like one of those things, like, if you want to talk to me, like, if you want to come through, you know what I'm saying? And have something to say or whatever, you know, you want me to talk to you or whatever, excuse me, and I have something to say, this is what I demand. And it's up to the person to say yes or no. But it looks like Tim in the back end and last minute was like, you know, oh, by the way, I need a private jet. So it kind of makes you feel like this person did not want to have the debate, you know, like I, I will say, I don't know that I've heard of any podcast person doing this. I've heard of private coaches doing things like this and that's fine. Like people can ask for whatever they want. So I'm not one of the, I'm never one of those who's going to be like, <laughs> what do you think you're special? You think you're all that? Like, no, but you're also being disingenuine though. That's the, that's what you're being. You're not being genuine. You're not negotiating. Well, he does live in a city that's not located near a, Big airport. I mean, literally, I think he's somewhere out in, in West Virginia. Tim, uh, I'll say a bunch of nice things and maybe something you should look into. Smart, opinionated, gets views, uh, very capable, but book recommendation. Maybe you read How to Win Friends and Influence People because there's better ways to navigate but relationships. Is, but this is not How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is called lying. Mm. There's a difference. Because How to Win Friends and Influence Damn. People. My man came right out and said it. It is called lying. Like he's been doing some, I don't know, man. It's looking a little weaselly, you know? We could take a different approach. Here, he says what? what scroll down, go, Rob. Go scroll down, Rob. I offered it. He said, turned it I turned it down. You never did. You asked for a private jet. So don't lie, Tim. Just say that you wanted us to pay for a private jet. And of course, we're not going to pay for a private jet. Here's what I want to tell you. So, the, but like, let me just say this too. They ended up having, uh, you heard what Patrick Bad David said, that Tim had a special Miami. Patrick Bad David went and went for free. Didn't even charge him. And he could have charged him. He definitely could have charged him. So it's like, you know, um, it, it really is kind of crazy. So if you guys want to know that this is the situation that Tim Pool is being um, accused of having like his mind like blown over because... The thing is, Tim Pool was supposed to have this person on his show. He made every, you know, every story up as to why he couldn't. It was like a whole thing. And then now people are looking. The Hodge twins has this person on their show. So it's like lately, especially with the conflict in the Middle East, Tim makes these weird like farming, uh, engagement farming kind of um, posts. And it's like, bro, like, why, why? We need you to speak the truth. We need reality from you. You have a huge platform. Just speak in reality. It's not even about picking sides or anything. Americans should know certain things, right? Like, why are our elected officials making anti-Semitism bills? Why are our elected officials, you know, sending more money to other um, countries and all of that? So we need, we, you know, people are relying on Tim Pool and his platform. And all he's been doing is just kind of being very watered down to the point where he even had Aaron Mate on, which, I mean, I respect him for having Aaron Mate on. But Aaron Aaron Mate is giving him the history of Israel. And then Tim is like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And Aaron Mate finally be like, but this is my heritage. I used to live there. Like, I know what I'm talking about. Right. So it's just a bit much. Right. So Tim is getting called out, but it's okay though, because over here on Bring the Asteroid, we will bring the reality. We won't have any problem talking about what's real and what's true. Guys, please continue to support the channel by liking the video and hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you for coming through. And uh, we'll talk again at the next one. Bye.